everybody. This is part three of the handbrake mod for uh, the Thrustmaster. Um, we're gonna go over the handbrake today. Um, I didn't buy didn't buy another one uh, just because it was gonna be a waste. I wouldn't have been able to use it for anything. Um, so I'm just gonna go over my setup. It's gonna vary for everybody because of what wheel stand they have or what they have set up for their wheel. Um, anyways, let's just get into it here. This is the cable right here, coming out of the base is what we what we soldered and uh, you know drilled the hole and it's about the back. Here is the other wire lead that comes out that you you get um, with the plug in that in the description. Um, so basically, you'll come out and uh, solder on some more speaker wire, same speaker wire we use for the wheel and the base. Um, I just have heat shrink over this, um, which is in the description as well. This is going to get redone. Mine's got a bunch of six inch pieces connected together. I bought, went out and bought the same stuff that's in the description. I just need to redo it um, when I get time here. Um, anyways, this is all ran all the way up through into the base, or into the handbrake over here, um, all the way up to the button. Um, so that's the momentary button switch that will be that, that you'll use. Um, Anyways, for the handbrake, all the wiring there is for this series, so um, getting into the handbrake here, like I said, didn't buy another one, um, just because I wouldn't be able to use it in a bit of waste. So, uh, we're just going to go over what I have, you can take from what I've done and, you know, apply it to what you have. Um, when you first get the handbrake, it's going to be faint, basically backwards laying down like a normal car handbrake will be, or emergency brake will be. So you just basically got to pull this little E-clip out right here, pull the bolt out, or the pin out, I'm sorry, and then uh, flip it around. Same thing down here, you're going to pull this bolt out too, so it'll remove so you can flip it. Um, pull it out, and then adjust it however way you want to. There's, if you'll look here, there's three different adjustments there um, that you can put it to, and it's originally to this one up here. So, um, Anyways, back to this. When you first get it, there is going to be a master cylinder that hangs off the back here, and it's, it's bolted on by these two Allens. I just utilize the Allens. Um, for this. So you'll pull that off. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to pull those Allens out and pull the master cylinder off. It's going to have a rod in the center of it with a connected to a plunger for the master cylinder that runs up into here. You'll end up uh, taking loose this lock nut right here. This is part of the original stuff. The, the, the spring is inside the master cylinder. You're going to want to keep that, but besides that, um, there's not much else inside that you're going to want to want to keep. So it's that spring there. Um, this is like an inch and a quarter washer with the same inside diameter as, as the, the bolt that you'll end up getting. This is a bolt that's replacing that shaft that you pull out of the master cylinder. Um, it does need to be a little bit longer and it helps if it has um, basically the, the um, spacer in it where there's no threads. And you want probably an inch at least, maybe two inches of, of no threads. And I think this is a six inch bolt that I put in here. Same thread pitch as the, the shaft that originally connects to this. Um, so just bring it into a hardware sh shop if you don't have any bolts laying around. And then uh, get the same thread pitch. Make sure we get, get a six inch one with like a two inch shim um, that's already attached like that. So, um, And then obviously you're going to need to pick up um, an inch and a quarter, inch and a half inch washer or so that just barely fits over the over the bolt. Um, you'll need another nut, same thread pitch, because um, you need a locking one and then this is your adjustment if you need to do any adjustments of how tight you want or how much throw you want. Uh, so pick up that and then for the back side here, there's a hole back here so you basically need to cover the hole up. This is a fender washer, this is a two inch, might be a little bit more than two inch. Most all this stuff I had laying around my house, I, I do a lot of automotive repairs and stuff like that, so I have lots of hardware laying around. So um, anyways, so you're going to need a decent sized fender washer. I want to say that's probably two inches at least. And then I just utilize the bolts from the actual master cylinder and uh, just put it on there. And the inside diameter is just barely big enough for the bolt to go through and that's what you want so there's no slop. Um, and as I pull it, you see it comes back through there. I have a little washer or a little rubber O-ring in there. It just kind of stops the uh, 
the clinky sound as it comes back through gives it a little bit of cushion. Um, and then for the button, this is where you'll get creative because that's what I had to do. I do want to change this eventually, but for now this was like some type of hanger or like a, a bracket for, I have no idea what it was. I want to say it was probably for conduit line. That's what it looked like, a little U conduit line bracket. And I just bent it, but it's got, it's kind of flimsy and flexible. So when you pull the handbrake, instead of being stout, it bends back a little bit and keeps it from uh, breaking the button or being too rough on it. I've actually gone through several buttons because of that because it was, wasn't was working right that way. Um, but anyways, get creative because, like I said, this is my setup and this is how it works for me. And if you have the same rig as me, then, you know, awesome, this will work for you if you can just follow along. I just have one bolt that holds it down to the, uh, you can see it inside there, and I just have one bolt that holds it down to my shifter bracket mount thing here um, but yeah and then back in here this is a bump stop for a shock for one of my old shocks from a truck um, just helps give that realistic feel when you when you come up it gives it gives a little bit of a give but feels stout um, you don't have to have that but it helps take up some of the slack and and uh, makes it feel better so you, know, you can you can actually buy rubber um, spacers like that at like Ace Hardware and stuff, they have a set of things like that. Anyways, like I said, the spring is inside. I'm um, just kind of going over it one more time. Spring's inside of the ma of the master cylinder, so keep that. That's basically all you're going to need or keep from that is, is the bolts in the back that are holding it. Um, that spring, this, this, there's a washer right here that I think came with that was in it. I'm not positive on that though. And then obviously that nut, the shinier galvanized looking one is, is, um, part of it too so what you'll need to pick up just to go over one more time what you'll need to pick up is another same threaded pitch nut for a locking nut um, that's probably an inch inch and a quarter washer with the same inside diameter as the bolt or just a little bigger so it slides through it um, another washer here which is that's probably only like a one inch washer the same ID again as the bolt um, if you want that rubber stopper right there, pick one of those up. It, it, I like it. it. makes makes it feel good. And then you'll need, obviously, a fender washer there for the back. If you want to change it up from what I have and make it look better, do it. Um, I plan on changing mine up, but it's, but it's working for me right now until I have problems with it. I'm not going to tear it apart again. So, anyways, that's, that's basically it. Um, to, uh... I, uh, hopefully everybody's pretty handy when they're coming to this because it's not very difficult but if I haven't said it yet this shifter or I'm sorry the handbrake lever here wasn't like this it was like a normal car and I flipped it you know you take this bolt out and take this e-clip off and pull the pin out and then spin it and then you just adjust it however you want it to be um, I think that's it if you guys have any questions leave it in the comments I'll get to get back to it if I can um, good luck and have fun thanks guys Okay guys, um, just wanted to show you really quick it working on this video to show how everything works. I know I did on the 1.5 video I showed how the T300 RS wheel works and everything, but this is the uh, Frostmaster TX base with um, the wheel that we wired for, which is the, the leather GT28 wheel. Um, so we're just going to do a quick session on Forza 6. Um, not very good at drifting this game quite yet, so... Um, show you guys. Um, so yeah, this 240 I just built really quick. Um, had to because I own the 240. It looks like the success is great. Maybe I'll throw a picture in the description. Anyways, let's get into it real quick and just do a really quick session here. Um, just want to show you really quick the buttons here. So this is the button that we soldered to. Um, that's the one that's connected to this button now for the handbrake. Which is down here, you know, the momentary button switch that we put down there. Um, anyways, that's where it's connected to. Just to menu, go through menus to show you that it still works in the wheel. Um, just gonna show you the TV at the same time as the button. Um, I'll just back it. Let's see, still works the same. Um, that's just for this purpose of being able to use it through menus because. 
Uh, obviously, you can't use the controller and the wheel at the same time. Anyways, that's how that goes. So I'm just gonna set up something really quick. Um, I don't know, do something, some track really quick. I'll fix something just to show you that the handbrake. That's it. Um, hope you guys like it. Like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions. Have a good one, guys.